Okay, so now we're ready to deal with the mashed potatoes. Now here's the thing, is when you're dealing with mashed potatoes, you want to make sure that the potatoes are cooked well enough so that, they, um, so that they'll mash up easily. And a lot of times when you eat mashed potatoes that are lumpy, the reason they're lumpy is because they're undercooked and they haven't been cooked long enough. So one of the ways that you can tell that it's cooked is by just taking a spoonful and pushing a fork through it. And you see how when I push the fork through it, it just falls apart. Okay? So you just take them and you take in a spoon and fold, push your fork through it. And if it falls apart when you push the fork through it like that, that means that they're ready to be mashed. Okay? Uh, no, no, it's not possible to cook them too much, but you want to, what will happen is if you cook them too much, then they'll start to disintegrate and they'll break down. If you were going to make potato soup, then that's what you'd do. If you want to turn your mashed potatoes into a potato soup, because you, everybody, your guests came and nobody wanted the mashed potatoes, but they're all Irish and they want potato soup, then you just uh, fry up some hamburger and throw in there and uh, let it cook a little longer, put some milk in it, you have to taste it. But that's not what we have here. So we're going to now dump the water out, and you just want to dump the potatoes into a colander. You all know what a colander is, right? Strainer. Strainer, like this, just a colander. And you just dump your potatoes in there to remove all the water. Now normally what you would do is that probably we're going to end up having to do this in two batches, but that's okay. Um, but if you had a handheld mixer, you would then just put these potatoes back inside your deal here and mix it with a handheld mixer. But I couldn't find a handheld mixer, so we're just going to use um, the, the regular mixer here, the KitchenAid, which is fine. So. Basically, what you want to do is take, um, and again, it's just kind of a, it, you know, there's no real measurement per se, but we're just going to prep these by putting on the bottom a pound of butter. Bring it. <laughs> Sour creams. Yeah, I saw that, Mike. Okay. So we're going to put a pound of butter, and then we've got some sour cream just to add some umph to it. I saw it. Oh, it's in the freezer. And I'm just going to split this half in half. And when it comes to mashed potatoes, you can kind of uh, gauge how you want to do it. The great thing about mashed potatoes is that it's fairly, it's fairly flexible, and you can add whatever you want. I mean, if you want to make cheese mashed potatoes, you could put some cheese in it. I mean, so there's a lot of different things that you can do. A lot of people like chives, so you could throw some chives in. But a little sour cream to the mix will just make them smooth and creamy. And then we're just going to put a bunch of potatoes in here on the top of that. And it looks like they all fit, which is cool. Okay. So this particular type of mixer, you just mix here, and it locks into place. So that the bowl locks into place, your whip um, locks into place also. So then you just push that down like that. And you make sure it's on, this has got a control of 1 to 10. So you just want to start out nice and easy. You don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to overdo it. So you lock it into place. There's a lock on the other side to lock the head into place. And you just want to turn it on to 1 and kind of mix it up a little bit. And then um, we need the mill. And I've turned it up to about uh, six now. And we 
We're just going to allow it to uh, mash. And we'll stir it up a little bit down the bottom. So you get a good mix. And then with mashed potatoes, basically what you want to do is you want to go for a smooth consistency. Now you can achieve that consistency with the butter, you can achieve that consistency as I said with sour cream. And then you just want to keep your spatula off to the side and be careful with it because you don't want that whip to hit your uh, deal or you'll know it. Okay, so we're just going to let that set for a moment and if you uh, take a, and then what you can do is you can taste it in order to see what it needs. So in this case, it's going to need some salt and pepper. So, you know, again, we go back to the, uh, okay. now you just add a little bit of, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Okay, and that's just about done whipping, so we're going to let that finish whipping. In the meantime, we want to make some gravy real quick, because it's just about done. So gravy, what I've done is I've taken the juice off of the, uh, off of the meat that's in the oven now, and I've just taken that grease, which, you know, people go, ooh, grease. But that's how you make your gravy. So what you want to do is you want to take the gravy and drop, put the grease in a pan and put some water in it. You guys like gravy, right? Yeah. All right, so we'll fill it up about uh, a quarter of the way. Now, gravy's a trick. A lot of people have difficulty with gravy. So what you so what you want to do is first of all just recognize the gravy is off of the drippings of your meat, and it has its own flavor, which at this point is pretty dull. So what we're going to do is we turn this on. Now we've got our um, flour from earlier here. And what we want to do is we want to take the flour and we want to take and we want to put cold water with the flour. Not hot water, but cold water. So you just want to put your put your um, cold water in and start mixing it up. And what what you want to do is you want to make like a paste. Now, very important, there's a couple of different ways, and this is how we're doing it this time. There's a couple of different ways to make gravy. The trick here is to understand how gravy is made. So basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to make a paste that is of about yay thickness. Okay? There's another way that you can make gravy from scratch. Um, if you're making a, a sauce, what, you, what I'm doing now is what's making what's called a roux. And what happens is, is when you take flour 
and you mix it with cold water and you make up this paste which is called a roux um, when you add it we're, what we're going to do is we're going to wait for this water to boil which is what it's doing you know it's getting there when this boils and you add the paste to the boiling water what happens is there's a chemical reaction which causes the flour to explode and when the flour explodes it tightens up and so that's what you want that's basically what you want the gravy to do you want it to tighten up so it becomes you know a gravy so this is if you're using the drippings off of a pan this is a quick way to make gravy there's another way where you would pull the meat out you would put your flour in let it cook up add water and make your gravy in the pan put it back in the oven that's another way to make gravy and then there's another way where you just make gravy using butter and flour and milk and that'll create a white sauce and for example this morning one of the things that I'm sure she wouldn't mind one of the things that I was talking with Justine about when she made her um, when she made her uh, fondue was that and she knew it she, because it started to separate after it cooled a little bit is that she didn't make her fondue correctly because uh, because she didn't add things in the right order and we talked about that and she said she's in a hurry and she knew she was in a hurry and that's why it separated so we chatted about that but essentially your white sauce your white gravy can be used for all kinds of things and when she was making her fondue what she would have done was made a regular white sauce and then add the grated cheese in folded into the white sauce already made and that's how you make your fondue from scratch you can do it with cheddar uh, I made uh, some au gratin potatoes the other day from scratch do a little ham in there oh, to die for um, so same principle so those types of those types of uh, things are things that you want to hold on to because you can make all kinds of man food with just knowing those basic things. You know, your basic white sauce you use for, uh, we're just waiting for this to boil. Your basic man sauce, so like a white sauce, you can use that to make like uh, cream chip beef over toast. Or that's cream tuna. Next month. That's huh? next month. Yeah, or, which is next month, by the way. Or cream tuna. Or that's the same basic. Uh, that's the same basic sauce that you would use in order to make slop. If you're making it from scratch, some people use, uh, you know, like they use a can of uh, cream of mushroom soup. Please. <laughs> yeah. Rookies. That you know, no, we do, we don't do cream of mushroom soup. You make a, a, a white sauce, fold your cheddar cheese into that, and then it has that full flavor, that full body flavor. So we, we don't we don't cheat and use cream of mushroom soup, or at least I don't. Hamburger gravy on man potatoes. Oh yeah. 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 So, <laughs> so yeah, it's you know. Yeah, um, yeah if you're making uh, or or use an Italian sausage or a breakfast sausage with a white sauce and then over freshly made biscuits, biscuits. Oh, oh, biscuits. to die for. Yeah. So that's that's you know <laughs> That's man food that you want to grab hold of. So what we're doing right now is we're just waiting for this to boil. And once it boils, which will be just a moment, then uh, we'll make up this gravy. The meat is already about done here. And so here's your meat here. You can show it to the camera. Well, it's hot. The meat is already done. You'll notice that the uh, there's a nice uh, coating of flavored flour on there, so it's going to have a good flavor to it. Besides the gravy that we're going to put over it, and our potatoes are just about done, which they are right here. Now, when you perfect your potatoes, you just want to make sure that. Um, Um, if you're using if you're using a mixer like this where it's a stationary mixer then you're going to have issues 
of not being able to get all of the potatoes to mash up so it's really really smooth and you don't have any uh, chunks in there at all uh, it's preferable to use a hand mixer because then you can go along the edges and you can pick up any stragglers but if you notice see how cream and uh, smooth and creamy those potatoes are that's what you want to look for. You want to look for a smooth, creamy consistency. And then your taste, you want to just do your potatoes to taste as to what you like as far as taste is concerned. But I would say that those are near perfect. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So our potatoes are just about done. Our meat's uh, just about ready, so all we're waiting on is the gravy, and we'll be ready to, uh, to eat. And the gravy is just starting to boil. So the trick for gravy is that you want to keep stirring. When it starts to boil, you want to keep stirring as you stir in the roux. What happens is, is that... If you don't do it correctly, then you get little lumps in your gravy. And so the trick to not getting your lumps is, first of all, to have a consistency in your roux. And then as it starts to boil, you want to take and you just want to start stirring. Now... If you step over here real quick, you can see that that water has basically tightened up. And so you want to give it just a couple of minutes to boil a little bit and let those things explode. And you have instant gravy just like that. No lumps, smooth with consistency, and that's what you want. So how would you do that incorrectly, just not stirring it fast enough or whatever? Not stirring it correctly and not having a roux that, is, that has no lumps. Mm. Now this already had, this already had um, the seasoning in it. Um, so this already had the seasoning in it, so I really don't have to season it anymore. But um, it's again, it's just got the right amount of not too much, just about right. Okay, and so there's your gravy right there. Now you can add things to your gravy. As far as uh, you know, getting your taste down, you can add things to your gravy uh, to uh, you know to increase the flavor and stuff if you need to. But your gravy, as you let it, as you turn the heat down, it's going to tighten up a little bit. So the trick with gravy is just getting the right consistency. Okay. So we got our potatoes, we got our gravy, we got our meat. All we really need right now is some salad, which we have salad right here. And so I would say that we're ready to uh, dig in and have a good man meal while we finish the movie. Questions? All right, let's do it.